Welcome to the show. Glad you're here. Thank you very much for being here. I, I do appreciate it. Have you ever heard of the Genius Olympiad? It's going on this weekend in Oswego State. We'll tell you all about it during the main event. Now it's time for the main event. How can one explain the talent of someone like William Shakespeare, who every time he put pen to paper, created a masterpiece? Can science account for genius? For someone like Isaac Newton, whose brain power alone is enough to calculate the force of gravity? Can anyone, anyone, have a eureka moment? What makes a genius? A genius embodies exceptional intellectual ability, creativity, and originality. A genius is one who has affection for all of humanity. Wisdom for all. A high sense of responsibility for society students share. And so the Genius Olympiad is going on at SUNY Oswego, and SUNY Oswego organic chemistry professor Dr. Femi Demkasi is here. How are you? Thank you. Thank you for coming. I appreciate it very much. This really sounds like an outstanding event, and you've got people from all over coming here, right? Yes. Uh, I mean, uh, for this year, we will have people from 52 countries and 35 states. And they're mostly high school students with their supervisors. And what do they do when they're here? Uh, when they're here, it's a four-day program. So after they arrive on the next day, they do the project setup. And then we do have an icebreaker activities. And the first day, we have a public weaving of the projects. We have about 220 projects. Really? Yes. Projects include science, architectural design, art and creative writing. And uh, they're all about environment. So the, the general theme is the environment. But we have different disciplines within that uh, general umbrella. For the next day, we have the judging. So we have about 50 judges and plus for the art, another judging period. And they will actually look at uh, e individual projects and then they will judge each one. And then at the end of that judging process, we will give them a gold medal plus a, a, an award, like a laptop or an iPad or something like that, and a silver medal and a bronze medal. The third day, we took all of them to Niagara Falls for nice. a whole day trip. So usually internationals and nationals, because we have people from Alaska, Nebraska, Montana, they've never been into New York. Sure. But Niagara Falls is a new thing. So the fourth day, uh, we have a college fair and plus the award ceremony. Nice. How did this all get started? So two years ago, I had an idea about having a, an, making a project Olympiad similar, but just the science. So later we thought that, okay, if you think about just the environment, just science is not going to solve the problems. So you need to have the public policy, you need to inform the public, and plus, uh, and you need to have architectural designs sure. and all that thing. So the first year, last year was the first year, we decided to do just science and art. The art piece is about how we can actually take in information about an environmental problem and convey that message to the public. Almost like marketing. Yeah. And then this year we added the architectural design piece. And the architectural design is like making a green buildings, mm -hmm. cities, like urban planning and an all that thing. And then also creative writing. We add poetry. Uh, personal short stories and also essay writing so that so the idea here is to energize anyone in a high school who have passion about environment they don't have to be a science major they can be an English student or they can be good at art they can be good at something else so that they can be passionate about environment can do a project about it and submit to us and I think it's probably true that um, and it's I think always been true that when it comes to the environment, uh, younger people tend to be more passionate than others yes. about it. And that's one thing. And the second thing is we try to educate them early so, so that they are actually more knowledgeable about it and they take, they take action when they're young so that that becomes their actually character. So when they grow up, they can just start acting on it. So what kind of things are they judged on by the judges? So for, I mean, for different categories and disciplines, science, art, architectural design, and creative writing are 
judging rubric is a little bit different because they're, they're completely different disciplines. Sure. For the science, we will look at the knowledge of the student, innovation, and, and the problem itself, and the tools that they use, and also their presentation skills. And for the art, same thing, uh, the technique and that they use, and how knowledgeable they are about the technique that they use, and the quality of the production that they make, and the message that they're trying to convey. And architectural design is similar to science, but the, in that case, we look at their design in general, what is the problem that they are solving mm. currently we have mm -hmm. in, in general building or cities and their presentation as well. So we ask them to actually either make a 3D version of their city that they are presenting or a building or a room design that they are trying to do. For creative writing, uh, we already have their thing. So it, it is about, uh, they will read their creative writing in front of the judges. So their presentation and then also uh, their grammars, their writing, and all that included in their rubric. How nervous do the kids get? How overseas kids? How nervous do they How get? How nervous gets? I mean, I think they practice before they come here. And <laughs> I some hope of they them do. Are, some of them are extremely good, actually. Right. Uh, so uh, I talked to a couple of judges last year, and then they said, I mean, they haven't seen that many bright kids in one room before. So, And that's the beauty of it. So Because you bring all these really good students and energizers from all over the world, and all over the United States and, and putting them into one room and asking them, talking to each other, even that is, right. is it good for them. Oh, it's fantastic, so, it yeah. really is. So then how do we take the ideas that come from this and uh, translate them to the real world? So we don't have a tool for that one right now, but what we're planning to do is for next year, this is our first year, is having a, a genius platform on the web and actually putting both art, creative writing, uh, and all the other projects that who get awards in this uh, Olympiad, put them on the website so that these are the problems and that these are the solutions the high school students came up with. So that that's one way that we can actually at least distribute that knowledge to all public. How long have these kids been working on these projects, do you know? So probably, depending on the project that they're working, probably the, I mean, two to three months to five, six months. Uh, really? we, we start application process. Uh, we let them know that there's going to be Genius Olympiad in September. The application process ends in March. So that is the time we gave them usually. Wow, and that's in addition to what they're already doing. Yeah. So That's a lot. I mean, that, yeah. that's, it really sounds like that it's in two years is already caught on. Do you expect it to continue to grow? Most likely it will grow because compared to last year, we received about 40, I mean, students from 40 different countries last year. This year it become 52 countries. So just in a year we added like 12 countries. So most likely it's going to grow even more next year too. And then also next year we're planning to add actually another discipline or category which we'll call Genius City. And in that case, we would like to ask the mayors of cities to send any projects that they are doing, environmental related, that they solve a problem within that city. So that we would like to have an award for a city, like the best environmental outstanding, uh, outstanding award for That's that fantastic. city. So, so we would like to have that city also come and in, in, that, in that case, the idea is actually distribute the ideas from one city to another. So see, this city solves this problem by this project, something like that. So I think that will be an applicable thing that you asked earlier. So. so all these kids from all these different countries are coming to Oswego State? Yes. That is that is amazing, too. It so, is. Uh, so, I mean, we are expecting about 250 participants. Those are just international participants. Really? Yes. That's outstanding. So, that's, I mean, that is good. And plus, I forgot to tell, we will have an international fair on Tuesday at 6 p.m., so all the countries will have a table, and they usually bring items from their country. Sometimes they even sell those. Sometimes they're just free giveaways. So if anyone interested to see 52 countries from Mozambique to uh, Burnia, South Korea, all different countries for all continents, we have a country. Really? Yes. And they all get to see Oswego? Yes. And Oswego State? Yep. Which is important? Yes. Do you get students out of this at all that, that decide they like it here? <clears throat> That's not the primary goal. No, but, I'm sure. Uh, what, last year, we didn't get any students from last year. But this year, we added the college fair into it. The reason we added, actually, is 
Last year, a lot of students asked question, if I want to apply, what should I do? How should I apply? What should I fill? And, and all that. So we decided to put a college fair. In the college fair, it's not just Tony Oswego Vigo, actually. It's all upstate New York. So we, inv we invited 30 to 40 colleges from upstate New York area, and about 20 of them will be participating. And this will be a good uh, opportunity for them to recruit if they want from these students because these are bright students. Well, I was going to say, these are great students. Yeah. And so, so these are the people that you yeah. want. So if, if any colleges that they can recruit, we will see how many can actually will come. So, so when you do the science part of it, are there different um, like sciences involved, like your organic chemistry yeah. and other sciences like that? Yes, in the sciences, there's also subcategories in the sciences. One of them is like ecology and biodiversity, which is more biology related. Then we have environmental quality, which is more chemistry related. Then we have energy and resources, that's more physics related. Mm. Uh, and then we have human ecology, that's more like psychology related. I mean, human ecology is, is they supposed to make a project related to the humans interacting with the environment. That's very interesting. Yeah. How did you, did, did you come up with this alone? Is there, do you have a... I mean, no, I mean, I do have, a, I mean, I, I'm a faculty member at the chemistry department, so we, I discussed these with my uh, faculty members in the department. As well as for the art piece, I talked to the Department of Art. They come up with the which categories we should include, what should be the rubric. Same thing for the creative writing. We have a creative writing department at SUNY Oswego. I talked to them. So they are the actually the people who design overall for that specific discipline. So my role currently is mostly, uh, since I'm the scientist, making sure that the science part is all intact and also as the director of the whole events just to making sure that everything is in place. How, how involved do some of these uh, projects get? I mean, they're actually pretty, I mean, some of them are pretty intense. I mean, when you look at the project, students work a lot. And then some of them use university resources. You can see that they use high-tech equipment and all that. And usually try to ask them whether they really use the equipment. They have knowledgeable of right, that equipment. Right, sure. So to see how, how deep they are into the projects. I mean, some kids, are. it looks like that's their life when you talk to them. Well, what are some of the uh, examples of something that's uh, perhaps involved in, or maybe won last year? Uh, thinking, I mean, last year we had a specific category just for last year for oil removal from water because of the right, spill. EP, right. So we had about a lot of projects regarding that, and people use uh, different materials. And they actually, a couple of people actually brought their projects and they show that how they can remove the oil. Uh, from the top of the water. I mean, those was last year. And this year we have several projects related to using nanotechnology for removing uh, chemicals from water or soil. For example, we have, I think, one project related to having arsenic in the soil right. versus apple, apple juices, those kind of projects. So they really are timely. I mean, they, they yeah. do, oh, yeah. do the research and they really are... I mean, usually it is time tied. So, I mean, you can easily see that students are knowing what's happening. I mean, for example, one student from upstate New York area, hydrofracking. Right. So they did a hydrofrac... They try to understand how the methane, if you try to get the natural gas from the soil, where it stays in the water and how tinted the water with the uh, methane natural gas. So Very interesting. So, yes. I like that one. Wow. Did you ever think it would take off the way that it has in just two years? We didn't expect that much, to be honest with you. We thought that even last year, our goal was if you get 20 countries, that will be good. That's and big. then we get 40 countries, <laughs> okay? I mean, and then we kind of expected this year it will grow, but we didn't expect that the number of countries, I mean, we have now China, and, but we, we get really big countries. We get Portugal, Spain, and all that European countries, or I mean, we get someone from Switzerland to a project. So only we get starting European countries as well as uh, other big countries too. So that is a change this year. So uh, over to the public, can the public come check it out? Yes, they. As I said, Monday uh, between six to nine, public can come and check and talk to the students. That's the public weaving of the projects. And Tuesday six to eight, that's the international fair. They can come and talk to the students and have. Uh, get knowledge about the individual countries and states. What are, when we talk about high school kids, are they typically seniors? Are they juniors? Are, there's a uh, range? Most of the national students, U.S. students, they're seniors, 
uh, international students, it's mixed. It is junior, most of their juniors, because the time of the schools are different in international. Oh, okay. So I think they're mostly juniors from international countries. It's interesting because we're talking about um, STEM, and you're talking about uh, in this country really focusing more on science and technology. Yes. And uh, I think this helps tremendously when you get the type of turnout that you get and we have I'm, I'm assuming we have local uh, competitors too yes we have uh, at least four or five students from Syracuse area so one of them is in creative writing we have one in the art section and three from sciences I really think that adding the creative writing and the art is very interesting because most people don't consider it when they consider the environment I think it's very very interesting yes that, that is that, that is a different uh, aspect of our actually organization because when you look at other high school competitions they are usually STEM, just STEM field. Right. So w that's why we decided to, since our environment, that's our focus, we, th the way that I'm looking at the projects is how can we get more students actually excited about the environment. So that's why we thought that okay, if, if students not interested in science then, science, then they can be interested in art or they can be interested in writing. So that's why we keep adding new projects like that. Well, I think this is outstanding. I really do. Congratulations on this. It's obviously a success already, and yeah. I appreciate you uh, coming in. So again, um, it's the, the judging and everything takes place this weekend. The projects are being all set up, but the public can come Monday and Tuesday. Yes. I mean, if they want to know all the schedules, it's on our website, geniusolympiad.org. Okay. So we have a schedule up there so people can look at it, and it's also stated which events are public, so they're all welcome. Very good. Thanks for coming in. Thank you, hosting us. I really appreciate yep. it. I do. That's the main event for today, and now it's time for the link.